Uninformed critics of person-directed living may argue that the benefits are trivial, the costs hard to justify, and the demands placed on families excessive. Well, to those critics, I'd like to introduce Isaac Neron. Isaac wasn't born blind. He went blind in one eye when he was, I believe it was two, totally blind when he was um, seven. So it was a kind of a double, double whammy there, you know, really, really difficult then. Um, he was later diagnosed as autistic, and all of his life he stayed in programs, you know, school programs, with other children with disabilities like him. Isaac, slow down. Hey, take it easy. He knows I'm talking about him. This is why he's doing this. Isaac, take a deep breath, okay? Isaac used to be very, very self-abusive. He would never hurt anybody else, but very self-abusive to himself. I mean, I can show you pictures where he put, literally put holes in his face right down to the bone. You know, black eyes, um, never slept, he wouldn't talk, wouldn't communicate with us. He was in like a world his own that was, that was it. We couldn't get through to him, you know. He would never communicate. Now, if you want to know about now, <laughs> since he's been out of the programs and had a support worker, I mean, a big big, huge difference, 100% difference. Isaac communicates with us, he can make his own coffee, he can make his own sandwiches, he bathes himself, he dresses himself, he never did any of this before. I did everything for him. This remarkable turnaround isn't the result of a dramatic new program or an innovative new therapy, but rather a common sense approach that provides Isaac and his family with the funds they need to support him. Compared to what Isaac had in various programs throughout his life, it's a night and day difference. In a program, he's not really learning anything. He's with other people with special challenges. He's in a room with everybody that's like him, and some of them were a lot worse. Some of the others would be, you know, screaming and yelling, and then they'd have to take Isaac out of the room to give him a rest. And I just thought, I don't want my son to be programmed. You know, I want him to understand that there is a life out here. We all want to experience life, and Isaac is no different. He had incredible difficulty coping with a rigid routine that offered little variety and few experiences. Forget about thriving and learning. It was hard for him just to get by. So over time he withdrew and he became frustrated, living inside himself with no confidence that anyone could or would listen. Life became unbearable for Isaac and Alice. There was a point in our life um, when he was very, very self-abusive and he had a big hole in his face and that. I couldn't get any hospital here to admit him. And the doctor that seen him in Blenheim was afraid of septicemia setting inside. That's how bad the damage he did. I couldn't get any doctor down here on Wednesday to see him, to take care of him, to put him in the hospital. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not proud to say it, but things were so bad that that was the day me and Isaac, I was gonna finish it for both of us. You know, I'll be honest with you. I couldn't take any more. I couldn't see the suffering for him anymore. And we came very, very close, our car going into that river. When I think of it now, it horrifies me that I almost did something like that. But it seemed like, at the time, it seemed like I had no other choice. But there were other choices. And they arrived with the support funds that Isaac and Alice received to hire a support worker. At first, the funds were intended to simply help Alice cope a few hours a day so she could take care of herself and her home and do whatever needed to be done. But as Isaac became comfortable with his worker, they started going out and doing more. And Alice, Isaac, and his worker began to see new possibilities. Well, I've got to know him over the last couple uh, Actually, it's been a year today, and he's told me what he likes and what he wants to do. And um, each day I give him an opportunity to, to decide. 
and then if he needs a little bit of encouragement due to the mood or the weather might be bothering him, then uh, I give him options and he'll choose. So what's a typical day? Typical is uh, we try to get exercise in to help with his um, physical being and his, his uh, bowel routine. We have our lunch together. Um, we'll do um, leisure activities including walking, oh, swings. Okay. He loves going to hardware stores. Um, he likes the smells and the touches and the different objects as well as the echo of the big larger building. But he also does like Walmart, enjoys the colognes and the perfume smells and the soft toys and anything sensory stim for him. No, sit up straight, quite push your weight. You're going to help me pick tomatoes after, aren't you? And what do you do with your days, Isaac? Okay. Say we do our laundry. Yes. Say it. I do my laundry. I do my laundry. I make my bed. I make my bed. I vacuum. I vacuum. You help mom with the dishes. You set the table every night. Right? And now you have... Listen, and now you have jobs for the senior citizens, don't you? You do grocery and shop. Dishes. Yes, and dishes, and you go shopping for people, don't you? Grocery store. Right, the grocery store. You go to the grocery store shopping, right? Yes. And you make money for Tim Horton's coffee, right? Yes. And then you go to Allison and Sean's, and what do you do there? You do lawn work for people in the summertime, and then dance in the garage, right, with all the guys. So he's got like a life like we have, you know, it's his, his nights out. Uh, he's got his bad days still. I mean, <laughs> believe me, there are some bad days. But he's come so far from, from years ago. It's, I never, ever thought in a million years Isaac would be where he is today. He never. Now the jerking that he's doing, that's, that's seizures. <coughs> I can't control that. <coughs> Like, take a deep breath, okay? You want you want to go? Hey. 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 We've been going through the last few days. You okay now? Take a deep breath. Come on and sit down. You want a bottle of water? One of the key benefits of flexible funding and self-directed living is flexible scheduling. Isaac's behavior fluctuates day to day. And it's hard to say whether it has to do with autism and the way in which his sensory system processes information or some other physical ailment. He has periods where he has extreme difficulty sleeping or days where he seems to be in near constant pain. So it's critical that his daily routine can be adjusted accordingly. While a program or service usually follows a nine to five schedule, Isaac is more alert and prolific if he starts his day with a support worker at 11. Having options and choices as simple as this has made all the difference. Thank you, that was a good job. And all the dishes from them. Would you like a cookie? Would you like a couple of cookies? I can cookies. What do you want? Butter. Peanut butter. On the cookies. Peanut butter on the cookies for supper? On the cookies to supper. Okay. Just okay, good job. Thank you. Special cup. And it's in your special cup of coffee? Okay. Have a seat. Good job. Thank you for helping with those dishes. Isaac's got decisions now. And me and him make those decisions. You know, I'll ask him, you know, do you want to have your supper now? He, he, and he knows the difference. No, I don't want to eat. You know, or do you want to go shopping? No, I don't want to go shopping. Or I'll sometimes I say yes, mom, and then bring me his wallet. Let's go shopping to buy his clothes. He goes out now. He has to say in his own, even though he can't see his clothes. He goes to help pick out his clothes. All right. Good job. Thank you. Since Isaac has had control, more control of his own life, 
It's made a big difference in his behaviors. A big difference. Put your head up straight, buddy. Isaac's behavior has improved, and he's taking advantage of new opportunities. But to truly belong and participate in a community as a citizen, it's important to give to others, to make a contribution. So he and Alice decided to offer his services to others. We made up flyers with uh, Isaac's name on the bottom and phone number for um, errands, to run errands, and they just can donate whatever they want. If they want to give them a dollar, give them a dollar. They take off the pieces of paper and they call me and say, well, we need some groceries done. Could you, your son go with uh, his support worker and get her? They give him the grocery list. He goes and does the grocery shopping, brings it back to them. They just picked up another man last week. He just got a new job um, picking up supplies for him because he had a stroke. So it's things like this that he does. He does yard work for um, five neighbors on the weekends, and he gets paid from all of them. So he's met a lot of friends all through this also. You know, it's not just the jobs. All these people are his friends now. When he goes into a coffee shop, everybody's, hi, Isaac, hi, Isaac, hi, Isaac, how are you doing, you know? Isaac, thank you, Isaac. Oh, I've got it. And your other one, bud. Oh, you've got two. Oh, one up the sleeve. We're starting Christmas okay. early. Yeah. Thank you. And, and he remembers, Isaac doesn't forget. He can hear your name, talk to you, he may not hear you or see you again for a year. And then a year later, you come back and say, hi, Isaac, and he would say, hi, Jeff. He's got a very, very good memory. The strides Isaac has made have changed his life. He's involved, he's learning, and he has new friends. He's enjoying his life, but perhaps the greatest benefit has been the way in which his personality has flourished. He has a great sense of humor and jokes with his family. He loves his niece and enjoys playing with her. After many years, he's learned what he likes and he's learned how to express himself. With the progress he's made, not only does Isaac have a future to look forward to, but so do his parents and family. You know, I have high hopes for him, and it's, it's high hopes for me and my husband also, because we can relax now, you know, like we have a son who, who makes us happy, who doesn't, I'm not crying all the time and depressed because he's hurting, and you know, he, he communicates with us, we, we bring him on outings where we couldn't do that before. You know, it's just, it's like a normal family. I shouldn't use the word normal, but I have to because before it wasn't normal. <laughs> but no, he's made us so much more relaxed. Like I say, he communicates with us. It's like having a, it's like our son has come back to us. Isaac Naron has come back, but with the opportunity to control his life, he's going places too.